Wer kann Batuta, Balestra, Cavazion, Prix de Fer? Wer weiß, um was es geht? Aha, ich mach weiter. Coupé de Fer, wer weiß, um was es geht? Fencing oder auch Fechten. Ja. Und äh, sie befasst sich mit Antibodies und was? Fechten mit Antibodies. Why fencing EP? Fencing and uh, antibodies have in common, we will hear now from Katharina Reimel. So, I've always had some weird hobbies. Um, yeah, when I tell people about fencing, I always tell them fencing is like chess but with a little bit more of stabbing. Well, still they somehow seem confused. And of course I had to get a job, which hearing only the job description also leaves the people very confused. So family gatherings are great now. Um, I have to explain everything. And since I have two things that I want to explain, I wanted to explain everything at the same time. So everybody has heard of cancer research. I know that it's important, but usually when I tell people that I work in a lab, they imagine something like this. I mean, this isn't entirely false, but those are the chemists, not me as a biologist. So, and everybody has seen a fencing fight. Um, yeah, you would hope at the Olympics, but much more likely at a pirate movie. <laughs> so, how do I bring all of those things together? I came up with an idea. You will see that fencing and um, that fencing <laughs> and cancer research has a lot more in common than you'd expect at first sight. Trust me, I work in science, and I will show you what lies behind the mask. Okay, so let's start with some fencing basics. Hope you can see it. I'm sure you've all seen what I mean, but we're in science here, so let's be a little bit more precise. So, in this case, the attack starts from the right side. So, the international language of fencing is French, by the way, therefore pardon my French. So, the parade comes from the right side and uh, from the left side, and the riposte is uh, the counterattack, and then touche means that you hit somebody and that you will be given a point afterwards. So, in the lab, it's actually the same if you would believe it or not. So we also wear a white uniform, protect our eyes, and are also armed. Maybe you can see it over there, a little bit better. Maybe not that fancy. Um, yeah, and for me, as a scientist, I have a weapon of choice as well, not only an epee, like uh, Doug already mentioned, in the, uh, in the gym, but uh, in the lab, my... Um, my weapon of choice are phages. So phages are tiny virus that only affect bacteria, so they're totally harmless for us. But they are kind of armed themselves with tiny antibodies on their surfaces, which can bind to different structures like protein, for example. And we don't have just one phage, but we have about 10 to the power of eight of them but they all fit within a well that has the size of your pinky finger's nail, so they're really tiny. And what is also very handy about them is that they know the information about how their specific weapon, meaning their antibody, is built within their DNA. So this is very handy in the process later on if you want to multiply those antibodies. And we want to put them to the test. So we need them in practice, and we want to see whether they can bind the cancer marker. So later on, we want to watch at each phage individually. And how do we do that? So we do a binding test. Um, but what is also important um, is that um, the binding is not only important that it's bound, but also the pin 
on the top of the sword needs to be pushed down hard enough. So this is the fencing equivalent. And um, in the lab, it's also important. I'm sorry, I skipped the file. So this is the pin that you see on top of the sword. And in fencing fight, you need to push this pin down strong enough so that the fencing um, scoring system is turned on, and then you will score a point. So in the lab, it's actually the same with the phages. We need them to bind strong enough. And we see that with this data. So this is the data that we get after we have our binding test. So we have our binding phages that are binding to the protein, but they're not binding strong enough. So therefore, the light is not turned on, and the phages um, yeah, have a low binding to it. If the signal is high, then the phages have bound to the protein strong enough, and the light will turn on. So we want to focus on the uh, individual ones that have the most potential later on in the process. Like this one, for example. This one is called MB528. So this one is not a really nice name, so let's call him Dr. Benner. Dr. Benner is one of the phages that has the most potential um, for later on process. So those phages we take to a tournament. And a tournament um, is a place where the phages will be fighting against Karl Carcinoma, which is the final boss. So in a tournament, it's not only important that you can actually hit the target, but it's also important that you have the right technique. So in this case, uh, Dr. Banner didn't have the right technique. So he learned in practice how to do an attack, but he didn't learn how to do a riposte after he got parried. So that's why he got stuck, he didn't get a point, and he has lost a tournament. So on a lab level, this could mean that, for example, the protein structure on the cells look different than in our binding test, and therefore the phages are not able to bind to it. So what can Dr. Benner do now? So he wants to get better, so he consults his coach. His coach wants to make the best fencer out of him. And unlike sport fencing, where doping is strictly illegal, in the, uh, in the lab, it's actually kind of a necessity to get better and to generate the best fencers. And his coach has seen a little bit too many science fiction movies, so she wants him, uh, so she has planned some drastic measures for him, for Dr. Banner, which is DNA mutagenesis. So after this DNA mutagenesis uh, transformation has started, um, this is a process where actually the binders that are on top of Dr. Benner um, get even better, so they, that we uh, generate even better binders. So after this process, Dr. Benner still needs to do a lot of practice, and this time it gets even harder. So he has to, um, he has to do even more practice, and the target area is getting smaller and smaller this time. This is due to the fact that we reduce the protein that we um, use in our selection round each time so that it gets even harder and that we see which phages bind best. And then Dr. Banner is up against Karl Carcinoma again in another fight. And this time, when Karl parries Dr. Banner's attack, he has learned how to do a riposte and can touch and can actually have a point. And those would be then the phages that we use for further applications. But we first need to know which ones are actually the best. That's why we need to compare all the data that we have on them, and we need to see which ones are the best ones, and second, and so on. So I hope that I could get you all excited about cancer research and this method of phage display. And I hope that you can all see um, and then the next time you will see the Olympics or a fencing scene in a pirate movie, you will think of this science slam and this research that has the potential to, um, to make cancer history. <laughs>